Hello everybody, welcome back to my educational blog Edis English Literature. I am Ardhen Dude. Today we are going to study Leo Tolstoy's three questions. One of the most read and exquisite story with pragmatic instructions. Here we will try to understand the three philosophy questions and its answers. But before we start analyzing the story, let's look at Leo Tolstoy's personal life as well as his writing style. Do you know what British poet and critic Matthew Arnold said about Leo Tolstoy? A novel by Tolstoy is not a work of art but a piece of life. Truly, Tolstoy's writing is a full canvas of life. Like Tagore, he was also born in a landlord's family. And like Tagore, he also experienced the conflict in his heart, the agony of the simple peasant and that of affluent living. His all of the writings are the panoramic view of this world, the battles, the struggles, the observing the war in close quarter. In fact, Tolstoy is considered one of the giant of Russian literature. His works include the novels like uh, That Great Peace, War and Peace, uh, Anna Karnina, and the novellas such as Hasdi Murad, The Death of the Ivan Ilevich. All are universal and epical. The two words I have used here to explain him is the universal quality that his is the characters which tells the story of humanity. It's epical because it is not dying in age, rather it has touched every time, every tradition, every culture. So his is the world literature and he is the world poet. As at the core of the Buddha's enlightenment, there was the realization of four noble truths. They are the truth of suffering, the truth of the cause of suffering, the truth of the end of suffering, and the truth of the path that leads to the end of the suffering. In fact, all of us have some fundamental questions. If our questions are universal, then it is spiritual and becomes a story of life. Tolstoy's story of three questions also puts forth fundamental reality of life and touching the same fundamental queries, we can read it as our own tale of life. But why this kind of philosophical stories are written? Why? Now, if we try to answer the whys, let's find out the answers. So many of the great writers have passed through the moral conflict between reality and fantasy. Other real words are coming from the heart. Muse instructed Sydney to look in thy heart and write. You probably have read this sonnet from Astrobil and Stella. Milton was also instructed to write for divine causes. Poesy creates its own solitude. This is the subject for Tagore. There is a long tale, in fact. While working on the later parts of his life, Tolstoy took a kind of depression, which at times were so severe that he considered suicide. He was tormented by the need to find a meaning for his life that would not be annihilated by death. His a confession describes the spiritual struggle and the solitude. And there is a kind of a struggle to find out a solution. His a confession describes this spiritual struggle and the solution he found en route. To practice what he saw as the essence of Christianity, that is universal love and passive resistance to evil. A series of religious writings amplified this new path. In this, he urged people to live according to the dictates of conscience, which meant practicing universal love and living as far as possible by their own level. He also declared all forms of violence equally wrong, including war and the compulsion that the state uses against its citizens. 
he also seeks peace of mind and these three questions are meant for that goal so the three questions are philosophical questions that also lead to the ultimate peace of mind and that is attached to christianity now while coming to the present story his three questions is about a moral philosophy he wrote three questions based on fairy tales on uh, fairy tales or kind of religious legends written in a simple but expressive style it is intended to convey his idea of ethical christianity and expanded buddhism also he himself tried to avoid by his new beliefs sim- simplifying his life living on his own level and giving up material possessions now the christianity and buddhism are there the ultimatum of peace and that the questions he asks himself is through religious truth and that religion is ultimately a philosophy of life that he finds in his story as the story of three question goes a certain king or a jar the russian name for the king as you all know he wants to know the answers for his three questions namely the right time to begin everything the right people to listen to and the most important thing is is to be preferred or the most important thing to do simply the king wants to be successful in all his endeavors he takes immense interest in gathering the right resources in terms of right time right person whom he could consult and the right order of priority to carry out the work so his objective is to become a successful materialistically as well as spiritually now materialistic prosperity is the surface line of the story but spiritual prosperity is the ultimate of this story line now after few failed at suggestions the king out of his curiosity to know answers for his three questions visits the hermit living in a forest in fact he is the wisest person living in his kingdom the king helped the hermit by digging the ground because the hermit being an old man got tired of digging when the king comes into his abode every time he struck the earth with his spade he scooped little earth and breathed heavily due to exhaustion the situation warrants that the king has to extend his stay with the hermit as the sun sets a bearded man came out of the bushes with a severe wound in his stomach the king next cleaned and bandaged the wound the bearded man had come to kill the, that we will let her know in the story line and got wounded by the king's bodyguards had not the king bandaged the wound he would have bled to death now here king rescued the life or survived the life of that wounded man though the king saved the man's life without the knowledge about his intentions the bearded man as a token of gratitude decides to forgo the enmity and be a faithful slave to the king the king was very glad for having made peace with his enemy and knowing the all things that in fact he was mending wounds of the enemy who has just come to murder him he forgave him and promised to restore his prosperity and also arranged for his own servants and physicians to attend on him and to carry out a friendly relationship with him now as all these things happens the hermit uh, for whom uh, the answers and sorting of the three questions were pending the hermit interprets these two events had not the king taken pity on the old hermit and helped him dig he would got killed on the way home when the king would have regretted for not staying back 
therefore the most important time was the time the king was dick and the most important person was the hermit who was with the king and the most important pursuit was to help the hermit hermit later to help the hermit later when the wounded man was tended to the most important time was the time spent in dressing his wounds and for if the king had not cared for him he would have died the king would have lost the chance to make peace with him his enemy likewise the most important part said was the taking care of the wound in the in the uh, second interpretation of the story in the second line of the story the hermit invites the emperor to reflect on his recent experiences and how it is perfect backdrop to form answers to his questions so the entire event is the explanation of the three questions that the king asks to the hermit so according to the hermit the most important thing one should do is to do good to people whom we are with at that moment the present moment the king did well to both the hermit and the wounded man so the most important time is the present moment as the present is the only time on which we have power or over which we have power the most important person is whoever one is with you the most important thing is to do well to the person one is with the most important person is making that person happy and that should be the pursuit of one's life now coming to the logic of buddha as buddha implied or applied the experimental approach to questions of ultimate truth here the hermit's answer to the king is quite parallel it's the truth of life the present seed is the ultimate seed that yields fruits present action is the ultimate action that brings you fruits in the future and the present things or belongings is the ultimate thing where you can build empire in the future now what are the three questions that the king asked what is the right time to begin something which people should he listen to what is the most important thing for him to do now the answers are given that the present is the right time the people you are dealing with at the present moment is the most important one as you are listening my lecture i am the most important one for you and as i am delivering my lecture you are the most important aspect for me because you are the listeners now as i have chosen or we have chosen or determined the present time the present aspects of you and me now what is the next the next is the present things and doing good is the best that we can accomplish and by doing good we can yield or the best thing that we represent in the present time yield great results in the future so everything is present in our present aspects of living and present aspect of doing the things i think you have got the main points of the three questions here and if you have any questions regarding the understanding of the three questions you can just ask me pop up here ask me questions i will try my best to give answers like share comment and obviously subscribe to my channel bye bye